In today's video, we'll be starting a new series on how to create a custom blog with Laravel and Vue.js. As you can see, this is my blog. So this is what we'll be working on. Unfortunately, when I built this initially, I did not record it. So we'll be starting from scratch and then we'll start adding new features. But um, as you can see, it's very simple. It's based off of a WordPress theme, but it's not WordPress. I actually don't like WordPress at all. So this is why I decided to go custom. Um, we have a sidebar here, which is sticky to the side. We have posts, we have pagination. Uh, when you click on a post, we have uh, a detail view. We can include video content. Uh, we have an email opt-in and a few other features. So let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is go to the Laravel website and go to the installation documentation. And we will grab uh, this right here and copy paste it into our terminal. So right here, and we'll call it dev blog. And then we'll wait, um, possibly forever, um, while Composer pulls everything in. Fantastic. So I will cd inside the directory, dev blog right here, and I will open the project inside of our code editor. So the first thing I want to do here is open package.json and we won't be using jQuery because uh, we've done enough of that in the past and we're, we're not about that life anymore. I will be using Vue. And we don't need Bootstrap either because, yeah, we just don't. So I'm going to save this and I'll go back to the terminal. And we're going to npm install. And npm is another uh, speed daemon, giving Composer a run for its money. So we'll wait while this uh, pulls in all of our JavaScript packages. Okay, so I've actually turned a year older and NPM is done pulling in everything. So because we're not using Bootstrap, we'll be using um, a package called normalize.css. I'm going to save dev. So that's a package that's going to give us a few uh, defaults for um, our HTML elements to help us uh, work off of. There's going to be a better way to say that, but I'll go with it. And we're done. The next thing we'll do is open composer.json. And here at the bottom under auto load, well, not really the bottom, but you know, we'll add files and it's going to be an array. And we're going to put in app helpers html.php, which means we need to create that file. So we'll go under our uh, app folder and we'll do new folder and we're going to call it helpers. And then we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it html, uh, html.php. So those are going to be our HTML helpers. And I usually copy paste those from other projects. So that's what I'm going to do now. So there you go. It's all copy pasted in. As you can see, we have a style TS uh, helper, which helps us uh, bust our cache on the CSS. And we have the same type of helper for our JavaScript. It simply adds um, a timestamp at the end of a, of a JavaScript file. So not the best explanation ever, but I do have a video on that topic if you're interested. So the next thing we'll do is we'll open our Webpack uh, mix file. And the first thing I like to do is to, well, first I like to remove um, excessive uh, dog blocks. Uh, the second thing I like to do is to do mix disable notification uh, because otherwise it kind of nags you in the top right of the screen every single time it's done compiling, which is quite annoying because I like to save my CSS JavaScript compulsively. So next I like to separate those into uh, two different uh, lines. So this is going to compile our JavaScript and this is going to compile our CSS. So that's done. Next we'll go back to the terminal and we're going to do uh, git init and that's done. So next if we open our web browser and we go to devblog.dev, you can see that we have a fresh Laravel install. So let's start customizing it. Back to the editor, the first thing we'll open is the routes web, so the web routes, and once again, we will get rid of those doc blocks. So here we have um, the home page basically, and we're gonna use a controller, and it's gonna be the posts controller and the index method. So the home page is gonna be the post index basically. So next we need to create um, that controller. So we're gonna go artisan make controller post controller. Uh, say what now? Oh, I think it's because we did not run a uh, composer, uh, dump, autoload, optimized because, oh yeah, we have an actual, we have an error. Oh, I used the backslash again. I keep doing this. I don't know why. So we're going to open our composer.json file and here it should not be a backslash. It should be a forward slash. There we go. 
uh, now we can actually run the uh, composer dump auto load and it works now we can actually create our artisan make controller post controller and it actually worked so we'll probably need a post model so we'll just do that now so artisan make a model and we'll just call it post uh, yeah that's good and that's done so next we can close this and we'll open our post controller and we will um, create an index method here so public function index and there we go it's going to return a view called post uh, post I said index and there we go so now we will create that uh, that view so under resources uh, view we'll do a new folder and we're going to call it posts and right there we're going to do a new file and it's going to be index.blade.php so here it's going to extend um, the layout file which we need to create still but whatever so section uh, content and we're going to put in some amazing content such as um, post index there we go and then stop so next thing we need to do is we'll take this welcome page that comes with Laravel and we'll simply rename it um, rename it to uh, layout.blade.php and we'll remove stuff we don't need so for now the title is going to be just a uh, dev blog or we can do like custom blog there we go custom blog uh, we won't be using uh, this font family we'll be using a different one that I will uh, copy paste in uh, next we'll include our custom JavaScript so we'll do here and we'll use our helper so it's uh, style TS and it's gonna be at, um, it's gonna be CSS app.css like this and we can get rid of those uh, style in the head because that's not what we're doing here uh, cool so the body we can pretty much remove the whole thing we don't need it uh, we'll wrap our whole app inside of an app um, con well, app container there we go uh, it's gonna help us tie in our view instance and here we're gonna yield for now simply uh, the content section at the bottom of the body we will uh, do script timestamp and we're gonna do uh, js app.js like this so this should be good uh, hopefully I didn't make a mistake here for oh actually the body I like to add an ID and we'll do um, yield uh, body ID so that's gonna help us um, basically namespace our CSS a little bit so that looks good to me okay so now we'll actually go ahead and edit our app.scss so we said we won't be using those fonts uh, we do want to import variables uh, here there we go we also want to import normalize um, so we can do uh, tal I think it's called and then uh, I think it's normalize.css slash normalize I think this is how it uh, how it goes and we're going to import uh, variables as well so that's good we'll go ahead and open variables.scss right here and it comes with a whole bunch of stuff that uh, we don't actually need um, so we'll, re we'll remove it for now uh, actually we'll go back to our app.scss and I do like to have um, my colors uh, separate from my variables here so we'll go ahead and create uh, that file we'll do new file and we'll do uh, colors and here we can do so I like to start with uh, black and black is this and let me just oh, I need to give it um, forgot to give it .scss there we go so there you go and then I like to have you know black 10% uh, and that's gonna be RGBA uh, black 0 0.10 0 0.1 And we can do this for uh, white. Uh, no, there we go. One too many Fs. Such a innocent of high school. Just kidding. Straight A here. Okay, so we need a brand color here. And I'm going to grab it from uh, the website, actually. So where am I using it? Nowhere. Well, actually the button, but it's going to be easier. There we go. Read more. I'm going to inspect. And I will grab the color code. So it's going to be our, you know, our brand color there we go the next thing we'll do here and is we'll create a little function so I never remember the exact code I think it's just function and we're gonna call it H and it's gonna take in a color and I think we do this and then return and it's gonna return um, darken uh, the color by 10% 
So I use this H is for hover. So let's say I want to have the hover color for uh, my brand color. I can just do, you know, uh, H uh, dollar sign brand and it's going to return 10% darker. So I don't have to remember uh, if it's 10% darker or 15% or, or whatever else. So that's cool. Another thing I will have here is a light gray, which is actually a bluish gray. So once again, I will grab it from the website. So this gray in the back is actually a little bit bluish. Um, probably found it in uh, Photoshop somewhere. Uh, so I'll just grab it if I can find it. There it goes. So it's over here. It's RGB. Well, did that work? I don't know. I'll just grab it again. Okay, perfect. Back here, we'll copy paste it, and that's great. So that's light gray. Cool. Next, we'll open the actual variables file here, and we'll put a few defaults. So I like to have a default spacing, and that's going to be um, four pixels. And we're going to have uh, a line height default of uh, 1.25 m, and we're going to have a light a line height copy. It's going to be 1.65. M. Um, that's all I can think of for now. I'm sure there's some other um, defaults that I want to set, but this is going to be fine for now. Okay, so the next thing we'll do here is uh, we'll start um, setting up a little bit of layout. So we're going to do layout and we're going to do import um, layout folder and we're going to do HTML. So this is where I'm going to find a few default styles for some HTML elements. So we'll create uh, the layout folder under SAS and we're going to do new folder and it's going to be um, layout and then we'll create a new file called uh, html.scss and in that file we'll do html body and first thing we'll do is set the font family to uh, the one we imported and set the default if I could type there we go uh, then we'll set our default font size to uh, 16 pixels uh, we'll set our background uh, to white We'll do uh, the color, default text color is going to be, um, we'll do uh, black 80. There we go. And then we'll set a height to 100%. And we'll do the default line height is going to be uh, line height default. Cool. Uh, next, we will change uh, literally every element. So like this and before and after. And we're going to change uh, the box box sizing uh, to use a border box. So what this does basically is that um, when you set the width of an element, let's say you say 500 pixels, uh, that includes the padding. So the browser will calculate the padding. You don't have to like uh, subtract the total width from the padding to get the actual width of the element. So it just makes things a lot easier for me. Uh, next, we'll set some default styling for headers. Um, some of those are going to be, you know, by default, uh, set already, but I just like to uh, make sure, you know, uh, there we go. So that's the default font family. Uh, we'll set the font weight to uh, 700, which is bold. Then we'll do, you know, no margin uh, by default. And the line height is going to be line height default. So there we go. Next, we'll do a little bit of setting for our paragraphs. So the margin, no margin on, the, well, no, no. I said no margin, there we go. And we're gonna set the line height to uh, line height copy. So it's a little bit uh, more spaced out. Next, we'll do a default styling for our links. So the color is gonna be um, our brand color. We want to do no text decoration. So that's the underline. Uh, we don't want none of that. And then when you hover, we will do a transition all 0.5 ease. So when you change the color and everything, it's gonna look smoother. And indeed, we're gonna change the color. And we're gonna use our new function. It's gonna be H brand like this. And hopefully, uh, this works fine. I did not make a mistake there. Um, next, we'll do a little bit of sign for uh, buttons. So we're gonna give it a border of zero pixels, uh, a background of uh, transparent, uh, padding of zero pixels. And we'll be styling buttons a little bit better, like have a default, you know, dot button style later. But for now, this is just uh, the default uh, styling that we're changing. So outline. Uh, none and we'll make this important. I don't know if you need to but just to make sure we don't want an outline and the cursor should be a pointer uh, Next we'll do uh, input select and text area and the outline should be uh, non and important as well and Finally, we'll do text area and we don't want it to resize because we'll use a script um, 
to auto size it. So this looks pretty good to me as a basis for our uh, layout. So next what we'll do is we'll move over to our app.js, right? Not this one, app.js, uh, this one. And as you can see, there's also a lot of uh, comments that we need to remove and we're loading a bootstrap file. So we'll go to that in a minute. Uh, we're loading view, that's great. We don't need a fake view component. So we'll actually go ahead and uh, delete it from here as well. Yes, move to trash, we, we don't need that. And then we create our new view instance and we um, bind it to the app element. So that's cool. Next, so let's open bootstrap.js right here. And we're loading Lodash, which is great. So we do want that. Uh, we don't want jQuery, as we mentioned earlier, we don't need that. Uh, we do want Axios here uh, and set the default headers, uh, CSRF token. So I need to add that to our layout file actually, but I don't know if we'll be using it just yet. So for now, I'm just gonna leave it off. And if I need it, I'll remember to add, you need to add a meta, um, you know, uh, in the head with, you know, CR CSRF token. So whatever, this is fine. And then we won't be using echo so we can uh, delete this whole thing here and we can save. And okay, so this looks pretty good to me. So we'll go ahead and close all of this and we'll open our terminal here and we will uh, try to uh, npm uh, run watch. So let's see if we get any compile errors or... Okay, it looks good, so we'll open the browser and we will, well, we can close this and we can close this and we can close this actually. And we can refresh here. And indeed we have our post index and there's no uh, padding around it. So you can see that the CSS is working. And if we open here, do we have, okay, CSRF to uh, token not found. So I will go ahead and add that actually. So let's go back to Adam and go to uh, layout blade. And here we just simply need to add another um, meta uh, there we go. Name is going to be, let me just reopen this. So it needs to be a uh, CSRF token like this. And the content needs to be, um, let me remember, what is it? Is it just CSRF token? Is that the helper? Let's try it. And if it doesn't work, I'll look up the doc. Um, okay. So that seems to be working. Let's just look at the page source and make sure. Yeah. Okay. So that works just fine. So this will conclude the first part of this series. Uh, we now have our Laravel project set up and the next video will be uh, starting to style just the basic layout of our blog. And we'll be looking at how we can organize our CSS so that it's uh, fairly enjoyable to work with, at least as enjoyable as CSS can be to work with. So if you've enjoyed the video, please consider liking it and subscribing so you don't miss the next episodes in this series.